Oh my gosh, I was at the airport. <sighs> God. When I was in Amsterdam, first of all, they have mice in there, which is pretty cute, but I don't think that's sanitary. And there was just like a mouse, and there was this lady sitting, and the mouse was under her chair. And I was like, ah, if she sees the mouse, she's going to freak out. So I like went up to her, and I was like pointing under her chair, and she thought I was fucking crazy. <laughs> She thought it, she was like, she like refused to look at me. And I know that. I know how that works because I do the same thing too. If someone's like, if someone's like bothering me, I just pretend that I don't see them because that's the best way to do it. So she was doing that to me and I could tell. And I was like, oh my God, I'm in too deep already. I'm in too deep already. So I was like pointing under her chair and she's, she finally looked up at me and she was like, and I said, there's a mouse under your chair. <laughs> and she thought I was lying. She thought I was lying. And she just looked at me. And I was like, I didn't want you to get scared, but there's a mouse under your chair. And then she went to look under her chair and it ran away. So I looked like a liar. It ran. And then it was running across by the wall. And I was like, it's over there now. <laughs> and she thought I was crazy. She thought I was so crazy. <laughs> she thought I was crazy. <clears throat> no, I just was like under your chair. And so it like ran across the wall. And she's like looking for it because she doesn't believe me at this point. And I was like, look. And then this old man that was like sitting down at the, at the fucking the hall was reading a book. And then he watched the mouse go by. I was like, look, he sees it. And then... <laughs> Just to further solidify my point that there was actually a mouse. <laughs> it was so stupid. I couldn't, I had to just keep digging the hole because I was already in too deep. I was already in too deep. And then my other worry was that she didn't speak English and that she was going to like start speaking and be like, blah, 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 blah. And I'd be like, oh my God, what the fuck? And then I went and told a fucking worker about it. I was like, yo, there's a mouse over there. And they said, you should see this place at night. There's hundreds of them. And I was like, what the fuck? What did you just say? Here's my first story. So, oh my gosh, the most British thing happened on the plane. The first, my first story is that I was on the plane from uh, Bristol to Amsterdam and it was a small plane. It was two by two. So two seats on one side, two seats on the other. And it was a little plane. And there's like barely anyone on the plane. And so I sat in my seat and no one was next to me. Or there was a girl, but she moved. And then across from us next was two dudes. And they were sat there. And in front of us were two empty rows that were the emergency exits. And the Dutch um flight attendant guy comes up and he goes we need someone to sit in the emergency exit row we need someone to move from their seat and move to the emergency exit and one guy was like i'll do it i'll do it i'll do it he wanted his own chair so he went and he sat down right he went and he sat down and this plane is small so it's got like a door right for the emergency exit and so the flight attendant says to him um he says all right, do you know, he's like, he's like, do you know what it means to be in the emergency exit? And the guy's like, yeah, I do, I do. And then the guy, um, the flight attendant was like, okay, well, I'm going to tell you what you need to do just in case uh, of an emergency. And the guy was like, okay, all right, I'll, I'm, I'm listening. And so the, the flight attendant was like, all right, so what you need to do is what you're, is in the case of an emergency, you're going to grab that lever above the window and pull it and then you have to take the door and throw it out of the plane and he's like it might be a little bit heavy <sighs> and the man that volunteered to sit there said it's all right i've had my weetabix this morning and the dutch flight attendant looks at him and he goes what and he goes, it's all right. I've had my Weetabix this morning. I'm prepared. And I was like, oh my fucking god. <laughs> it 
It was the most British shit I've ever fucking heard. It was fucking hilarious. I was laughing. I couldn't help it. I was like... <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It was so funny, though. I had to find a place to sleep. First, I had McDonald's and I had a cookie and a diet soda. And then... There's a hotel inside of the airport, and I was very tempted. However, they wanted 200 euros for six hours of rest. Bitch. First of all, their website said it was 50 euros for three hours each. Yeah, a chipple. And I said, no. I'm not doing that. So basically, I had to wander through all of this construction at the airport. I had to wander through all of this construction. And first my gate was at one place. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna sleep kind of close to my gate. So I went and I found a place that's a, a, a little sofa couch. That was probably, there was like six different, I'm so good at the airport now. There were like six different sofas. There were six different sofas throughout the airport. And by that, I mean six different types of sofas. So I knew which one was the most comfortable. And so there's a few of those at each gate. And so I found one at the one that I needed to go to. So I laid down on it and I cried for a while because I was sad to leave all of my friends. So I'm laying in the airport crying. There's men all over the place doing construction with the drills making noises. I saw a mouse, that was okay. Um, basically I cried for a while and my nose was very stuffy and I was sad. So then they were doing construction and I couldn't sleep and then I checked on my app and they had changed the gate after I had laid on that sofa and cried on it for like three hours. So then I went to the other gate and I found a similar sofa this one was a little bit better because there was the big window in front of it to look out at the airplanes, but it was blocked by a big construction wall. And it was about this far away from the sofa. So I thought, hmm, can, no one will bother me here. So I lay down, I cried some more, probably for another hour. And I took my contacts out of my eyes and I put them in the contacts case and I was crying still. And I had my sweater under my head and I put my blanket over my head because it is very difficult to sleep in a mask. And so I didn't want anyone to be exposed to me. So I put the blanket over my head and I was crying in my blanket fort and there were still men doing construction around. And so there's just some weird girl crying under a blanket. I'm choking, by the way. <clears throat> so I'm laying on the couch, probably crying again. And I hear... A noise. I hear a noise of what sounds like a motor approaching me. And I think, oh, it's someone doing construction again. And I'm lying there. And I hear... And I like kind of... I put my mask on and I kind of moved my blanket a little bit to see if someone was coming. I hear a man and it's a police officer. And he's on a fucking tiny Segway. He's on a tiny Segway, and he's like, Ma'am, can I see your passport and your boarding pass, please? And I'm fucking trying to open my eyes because I've been sleeping on a fucking couch in the airport, and I can't see anything because I'm blind as fuck. And I, I scrounge around in my bag. My eyes are like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. So the man, he's, I give, I give him my passport. I'm like lying on the fucking couch. Like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. And I can't see. He probably did think I was homeless. He thought I was squatting there. And he goes, flight's tomorrow morning, huh? And I go, yes. And he goes, okay. And he fucking, wait. So he does that and he goes, okay, one second. And he scoots his Segway back. And then he rolls it over to this column. And he's still got my passport in his hands. And he goes to get off of it. He did not dab, I wish he had. And he accidentally pushed it. So he ran into the wall and he stumbled down off of the Segway, which I could still see. 
even though I was blind as fuck. And he goes, here's your passport. And then he gets back on it and he scoots away. And I was like, okay. All right. Okay. All right.